So we've talked about different types of, um, of weakness and softness, dynamic variation, agogic variation, and we've talked about articulation, connecting our, our words in our sentence to build a longer phrase. I want to talk more now about the act of decoration or the act of ornamentation. Um, Bach inherited, if you like, three essentially three different types of ornamentation. What, the first one, what we tend to think of as soon as we hear the word ornamentation, is French ornamentation, where you can write it with a little TR that means trill, or a little wiggle that means mordant, or a wiggle with a line through it. It's the kind of uh, thing you can write in a table of ornaments. So this kind of symbolic uh, type of twiddly ornamentation we call French ornamentation. Italian ornamentation, uh, or Italianate ornamentation is much more florid um, and it much more becomes into the realm of recomposing. So, for instance, at the beginning of Corelli's Opus 5 Sonatas for Violin, Cello or Harpsichord, he does this really cool little Italian ornament at the end that really kind of sets out his stall for what the rest of his book of 12 Sonatas Opus 5 is going to look like. So this idea... <laughs> That, that simple idea becomes... So he's done a scale, but he hasn't just done a scale, he's turned it into a kind of ski jump, almost like a Galamian scale. And he's gone to the seventh, and then down a seventh to... Down to chord, remember, chord four, which is our... So... That's our dominant. So it's a melodic ornament, but he's also taking it into the harmonic realm. Almost in a very, very casual way. Now, at the back of that book um, of Corelli Opus 5 sonatas, you can see the sonatas as played by Corelli. And I love the idea that, that he was playing all these very, very fast, florid runs of scales and arpeggios. And somebody was there with a chisel and a sheet of copper trying to engrave it as he wrote. Of course, of course they didn't do that. But just as jazz musicians now will listen to each other's solos and write them out, transcribe their florid improvisations, that's exactly what violinists were doing with Corelli's Opus 5 sonatas. One, as Nicholas Cook puts it in his wonderful book, Beyond the Score, um, it's almost that the only thing you couldn't do with those sonatas was play them exactly as written. It, it, you would have to ornament them and decorate them in some way. So that's Italian ornamentation. I'm going to talk a little bit now about another more simple style of ornamentation that, that was very important to Bach. Um, and it's the idea that um, if I'm, for instance, if I'm just decorating a G major scale, that I might, that I might, this time, I might play it with a, a kind of a poggiatura, um, and in Latin they would call that accentus. So it's, you know, the simplest possible way of ornamenting that G major scale. Another one might be suspirans, which means um, a little breath, a little kind of gasp, if you like. So, so I'm, I'm kind of my my breath is on the beat, and then I'm then I'm I'm uh, playing those little suspirans groups of notes in between the, the breaths. Um, another one that's kind of related to that is called mesanza, and it's where you have three notes that are that are slurred and one note that's disjunct. So it could, it could be anything like that. Now Bach Bach uses this one quite a lot, and if you're looking at Bach's slurs, the same with Handel or Vivaldi, if you're looking at the kinds of slurs they're doing. Um, for instance, here's, here's a really famous example. From the, uh, from the G major courant for cello. Um, it's, it's so obviously that figure, Messanza. So you've got 
two elements, a pedal which is kind of has a wobble on it, and then a scale that, that you can shape as you kind of maybe crescendo up it. Um, it's so obvious that, that the figure is that, that um, Bach, and certainly Bach's wife, Anna Magdalena, when she writes it out, she doesn't need to write it carefully. She can just do squiggles over it that, that show you that it's that kind of slurred pattern. So that's the Misanza. Um, but of course, this, this kind of set of figures, that's two or three figures I've talked about, um, out of a whole vocabulary of hundreds of kind of tricks of the trade that a composer performer would have. And again, it's the interesting thing that when you read these books of Figurenlehre, as it's called, the kind of doctrine, the theory of musical figures, it's very hard to know, uh, is this aimed at a composer or is it aimed at a performer? And of course, it's aimed at both. They weren't using the distinction in the same way that we tend to in our kind of post-Stravinskyan age. So one of the other things that might be included as a figure is cadence. So um, I'm going to talk more in the next little video about cadence. <laughs>